All right, guys, today's podcast, we are talking about imposter syndrome, things that I'm facing with imposter syndrome, how to get over it or how I'm starting to get over it. And I think it's a really good listen, especially for those of you who might be going through it. And this is just a really real conversation. There's no set points or anything. It's just a real conversation of me venting about how I've faced imposter syndrome, some past trauma that's probably been the leading cause of it. And uh, yeah, hopefully this is a good listen with Sunshine and I. And uh, uh, enjoy. What that are we talking sense. about today? Today we're going to be talking about imposter syndrome. Why? Because I think it's something very important that is almost, it's, I, I feel like imposter syndrome is a word that's overused, but people also don't understand it. Like people will have imposter syndrome and actually have it. And there's people who use it as, as a block, like a mental block from like a creative idea or something like that. So oh. there's times where I'm sitting there, let's say I'm editing a video and oh, I don't want to edit like this because someone else did it. You know what I mean? Or Oh, so you're saying like, is it actually imposter syndrome or is it just you getting in your own yeah, way? Yeah, it's me. So that's, and that's technically what imposter syndrome is, but there's differences I think within my mindset that I've been feeling lately. And a lot of it is I sometimes think in this area of work that I'm in that I'm not good enough, but also I don't want to be like this person mm -hmm. or I don't want people to point out like, oh, you're only doing it because of that or you're you're doing this. Why should I pay you this when I could pay them that? Has you it ever I mean? actually happened before? Probably not. That's yeah. It's and never so happened. It's like that's the thing. That's the imposter that's syndrome. That's the thing is we we act off of hypothetical situations mm -hmm. and we adopt beliefs based off of things that we imagined. Right. And I, and it's like everyone has doubts and struggles with mm -hmm. self doubt, but it probably turns into actual imposter syndrome affecting you when you allow it to dictate your right. actual move. Because mm -hmm. yeah, I, I, I hear that like, Oh, I don't want to do this because someone might think this or someone might think that, but it's like, has anyone actually ever told you that? Has anyone yeah. actually ever said that to you? It's the same thing with YouTube videos. Like how long have I been in the YouTube space and how many videos have I actually made? I've made probably over a hundred videos and over the course of what, 13, since 2013. So you however, have made more than that. Well, I've edited more than that. Oh, okay. And I, so I've definitely, I've probably edited and stuff like thousands of videos, yeah. but like for instance, I have a YouTube channel, right? And there's this whole thing around vlogging and then there's this thing around Tesla content that I was doing and then there's there's a review and then there's Amazon. So I was all over the place, but I was only all over the place because if I did one thing, I didn't want people to think I was trying to be like this person. You know what I mean? So same thing with when it comes to camera work, like I want to promote my services so bad and I want to talk about it of what I do because I feel like if you look up my Instagram right now or you look at who I am and what I do, the first thing isn't, oh, this guy is a, a videographer editor for, for YouTubers or chefs. You see my daughter, you see me, and you're like, why is this guy getting likes? Why does this guy have 17 or 18,000 followers? Why, why, like, who is he and where, like, where, where's the value at? So, I think being clear with like what I do is what I want to do, but then there's other people out there who do the same thing that I'm like, oh, I want to be careful and tread lightly because I don't want them to think I'm copying them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that's the part that I want to talk about a lot because I think not only me, but many other creatives out there feel that way. And it's kind of, it almost bothers me because as you said before, but has anyone actually ever told you that? No, but there's a thought process in my head that they're not going to tell me that. They might think that. So now I'm thinking for people, right? Mm. So it's almost just like that toxic ex-girlfriend or boyfriend where they just assume that you're always in the wrong or something like that. Like I just always assume just that someone thinks. You're gaslighting yourself. That's exactly what for that sure. is. For sure. I mean, as a man, I'm like a, a master gaslighter, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm you guys kidding. are experts at it. <laughs> no, but. <laughs> Your kind. Yeah, my kind of people, you know. But no, but that's just kind of. I've, I've had that my entire life. Even when I, back then in 2006, when I first started break dancing, right? I did that, I don't want to say professionally, but like full time from 2006 to 2012. And 
I was very good at it, but the people I was around at the time did say it to me in my face of, oh, you can't dance, you're white, right? Or you can't do this, you're not that good. You're, it's, it, it was always because I'm white. That was always like the whole thing. It was like, oh, you can't do it because you're white. You can't do it because you're white. Oh, you're trying to be like me. You're trying to be like us and all that stuff. You're not going to ever, ever be good. And it was always like that. So mm-hmm. maybe that's what instilled in my brain of like when I ever try and do something that I love and someone else might just look at it and like play down on it. Mm-hmm. So there's moments like that where I feel like, okay, well, for sure I need to get over it. But that's something that I feel like is instilled in my brain of people thinking this of me for what I do, for what I love, but they don't, it's almost like jealousy in a way, but it all, it's also just like a, a, a way of bullying. And I think that's kind of like sat into me. So I think people who might go through what I think and what I do is going through, have gone through that in the past too, maybe, right? So it's just, I guess what I'm just trying to think about is, because I'm trying to self-diagnose myself, I'm trying to st- come up with the solution because I don't want to sit here and mope and dope and, and cry about it, but I want to be sure to think about what's a solution that could get me over it. And the number one solution, by the way, is the right is what we're doing right, right, right now. I'm filming something. I'm not going to say the most perfect things. I'm not, I'm not, I don't have a script. I didn't even prepare for this. I was putting, I was trying to put up your, this damn drywall thing and it didn't even work out. So it's just been a horrible day today, but I was like, you know what? At the end of it, I need to record something you need because to win I need today. to do something. Yeah. Yeah. No, but I, I think that, okay. A couple things. One, I think, yes, what we're doing right now is super important. Just, um, I, I have a little affirmation that I, or a little sticky note that I wrote for myself, um, in times like when I am going through self doubt and struggle and, that little note says like, when, when in doubt, just move through it because, and what I mean by that is nothing's going to happen when you're sitting there and like in over internalizing it and, you know, just not like the world will keep spinning and you, it's easier to move through those feelings than to let those feelings paralyze you. Um, because something that my therapist told me is Feelings only last 90 seconds. Right. And anything after that is you, um, you just like feeding. Dang, almost count the 90 and you might be a little better. Yeah. And so it's just like that. and, 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 And it's also important to recognize like that your feelings are valid. Mm -hmm. So you're saying, you know, you want to, you want to find a solution. Right. But Mm -hmm. it's also important to have the checkpoint when you're assessing, yeah. like have that awareness mm-hmm. and like just validate your feeling. And yeah. cause it's not, it's not feelings aren't wrong. You know, mm-hmm. it, we're human for They're sure natural to have, yeah. but you also don't have to find a solution right away. Mm-hmm. Like right in that moment, because until you allow yourself the space to kind of like sit on it, we need time to process it then naturally it'll be easier and actually faster. Mm -hmm. The solution will actually come to you because your brain is able to release, release those stored feelings that it's been harping Mm -hmm. on. Right. That makes sense. Right. So I think it's, I think like what you're doing right now, like in two ways, one, just moving through it, taking Mm -hmm. action on it. And then two, um, recognizing and like processing it and assessing it out Mm -hmm. loud with someone else because Especially, I know that, you know, for, for us, I don't know if this is something that you share, so feel free to cut this out if no, it's you're not good. something you share. But, you know, for our ADHD brains, yeah. we have a lot of racing thoughts for happening, sure. and they kind of just become an endless feedback loop at times if mm-hmm. we're not conscious about it. So I think it's really important that you are choosing to be conscious, and you're pretty good at self-awareness. Um, right. I feel like it's a pretty routine part of your personality mm-hmm. is you allow yourself to feel things like honestly in those moments, mm-hmm. but then you are re- able to recognize it for what it is later right. on. And so I'm, I'm just curious, like mm-hmm. with everything that you've said so far and like the, all the experience that you have under your belt and everything you've shared so far, is there something that triggered this bout of imposter syndrome like this recent bout because you said just you've been struggling with it recently yeah I mean I think a lot of it is um I mean there's like 
you know how there's just one thing after the other and then one little thing happens and it just tumbles down like Jenga, right? Mm -hmm. You just play that game and it's, it's, it's easy the first part, right? Oh, I'm not good at this. Okay, easy, easy, easy. The last, mm -hmm. the last one where I got to really think about which one am I willing to like kind of go before everything else falls. Yeah. That happens based off of a multiple amount of things, right? If it's like, for instance, what people don't know is I am a freelancer. And if people don't know what the term freelancer means, it means I wake up daily without a job, right? Oh, that's one way to put it. it it's literally the, the main way to put it is there is no, well, obviously there's contracts I signed there like 30 days or whatever it is. So it's like technically that's not true, but it's true enough as in like after those 30 days, what am I going to do for the next 30 days? Mm -hmm. And I'm the main one working in my household. I have a fiance and a daughter. If I don't work and do stuff, guess what? I got no home. I got no groceries. I got, I got nothing, right? Mm. So what triggers it a lot of the times is when I first moved to Vegas, I had an opportunity to work and it was an amazing experience. It went, it went as, as well as it could have gone, but then it just wasn't the right space and I had to leave. I had to make that hard decision to leave. And when I did that, it was more for my 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 mental sake because it wasn't a healthy place to be at. So what that did though was it negatively impacted the day-to-day -day living that I had with everything else. I went from making 10 to 15,000 a month to way under half that. And what you do when you make that amount of money at some point is your lifestyle is very expensive. Your bills are expensive. Your credit cards are expensive. Your rent is expensive. Your insurance is expensive. Your everything adds up and you don't really realize how much you're paying for until you don't have that, mm -hmm. those funds. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of sacrifices I had to make during those times. And the number one reason, this goes back to your question of what triggered it, is I didn't think I was even good enough because I couldn't make up that extra amount mm. until recently. Now things are kind of getting back in. I've, I've built up and this is where I think the positive side of things come in because I'm, even though I've still dealt with all that, I could have given up. I could have filed for whatever I could have done and got this and that. But what I did was I just kept showing up with a smile on my face and people don't know this. It's like, it, even if I post this or not, like, this is something that people don't know. I don't, I don't talk about this stuff at all because I'm never, people don't know me, right? So, um, but the main thing is that I was able to have opportunities that kind of made me realize who I am in a way. Mm. You, you, you know that, you know what's funny? I've been watching a lot of Disney lately. Moana. Yeah. And that is something. It's, it's when she's on the water and her grandma, what? <laughs> There's just so many moments in that movie that make me want to cry. <laughs> like, so oh. I'm like, oh yeah, well, <laughs> yep, yep, yep. But no, it's, that's funny that you say that. Um, it's it, it's a good movie, but it's it's about like like who 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 are you? Yeah. And it's like it's the best thing, you know. And I found that out. Yeah. No, so that like, moment. So cool. The moment for me, it's like the moment that always makes me cry is like towards the end spoiler ban has been lifted if you haven't seen moana yet <laughs> that's a you moana. problem Just that is a you problem <laughs> at this point um but yeah it's like that moment when it seems like there's just no hope when she's in the water, you know? Oh, and it's she my has, favorite part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it just seems like everything is against her. She's in her little rap. Is that where she gives the heart? And like, yeah, and then she That's has my favorite song like, in Moana, by the way, mm -hmm, is mm -hmm. that last... It's like, just like you up against this oh freaking like demon volcano. Oh, lava. man, I want to go home and watch Moana. Like, I I've, know, right? I, that's literally my favorite part because it has to do with something that... it Literally, that movie ties into my life so much. It's so weird. <laughs> it's like the, what is it? The, uh, so the part about the water, right? When she's in the water, her grandma, the ghost mm -hmm. comes up or spirit, I should say, comes up and she, it, the whole song's about like who you are. How or something far like that. you'll go. How far yeah. you'll go. It's literally, people like, will probably like, be like, oh, Chris, you're, you're a little baby for loving that or whatever it is, but it's no, true. Not. It's Who's true. Who's going to say that? But that part too, at the end where she gives the heart. She did something that was simple. She gave what was originally the 
volcano or mm -hmm. whatever the the land the piece back or the heart back to is it Tafiti? Yeah, Tafiti? she just I, yeah. I, I, but she I might, just did it. I might have to rewatch. Yeah, and you're right. She didn't yeah. have to like fight some valiant no. heroic battle of like. She you know, had to an give outwit. back what was someone else's. So no, she just at, at the end of the day, she just did what she knew was right. Exactly. And she and no, and exactly. she didn't know that that was mm -hmm. Tefiti or like she didn't. I don't know. She, I don't think she knew that that was the original land. She probably didn't like, know that that was going to happen with, like, the flowers because it was all, like, molten rock and everything. Mm -hmm. And then, like, it was, like, crawling at her. And then all of a sudden, like, like it gets quiet. Mm -hmm. And then it gets slow. And then she just... Mm -hmm. Anyway, so yeah, but I love to your that point, movie like, because that's of just that. Like, sometimes that's all it takes is something so simple, like, such so, a simple action that could have such a profound yeah. impact. And exactly. it doesn't have to be some exuberant, like exactly. elaborate so response. A simple act of doing, I think, is what my takeaway from that movie was. Is and that's what's led to many things that I've had the opportunity to do. Just the past thirty days, I've had such an amazing, like, opportunity, and like I can't talk too much on it right now until like you know stuff comes out. But I had the chance to go to Seattle to film some really cool stuff. And they want me to come back. Nice. And I've had more opportunities out in Seattle to do stuff. So it's just like I'm getting back that confidence because I know who I am. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So the imposter part is now gone because I showed up and I was doing my own thing. I had no direction. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what things I was filming. Mm -hmm. And I just showed up. And by the way, like probably TMI. But I had really bad diarrhea that week. I was going to say he had the shits. <laughs> it was bad. That's so bad. funny. I was going to guess, but that was it. I could not That was not your body have telling you. <laughs> a simple, solid thing. Because in Hawaii, I think I ate something wrong. Oh. And it was just bad. Like, I was, I had so much mental fog. So I went into there at, like, 30% of my energy. But I gave every 30% that I had for that. And I still came out and turned out. So. Oh, my gosh. But the thing yeah, is that. everything went to your explosive diarrhea. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. <laughs> All your energy. So it was. But the, but, the, but the cool part of it is that I'm, I was able to get over it. And I got even more feedback today from them. And it was just positive it was just hey fix these couple things but it's very little it's nothing like oh you've messed up the whole shoot it's just like make it shorter mm -hmm. that's it yeah that's it that's like that's that's literally it so i am slowly getting over imposter syndrome by simply staying active in my space so instead of hiding away because of what people might think i'm starting to take action i'm trying to think of a word <laughs> trying to take action into doing something creative to where it's like no one's holding my hand doing it mm -hmm. i'm not copying and pasting even if i am everyone does it yeah no i'm not copying exactly i'm not going to be dressing up as a certain person who does what i do and then and then do exactly their style like my style for what i do mainly my food videos is so different than everyone else's no one does them well maybe they do but i haven't seen my style in people's videos because mm -hmm. i just film I get angles that I think I like and I do it and then I do it good. So it's just, it's, it's, it's made me want to go around Las Vegas and hit up restaurants and just record stuff and just be, let that, you know, so fighters, for instance, some fighters need to fight. Mm -hmm. If they don't fight, they go crazy. Their mind goes nuts and they're like, I, I don't have a fight coming up. I'm just training. I need, mm -hmm. I need to have that 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 moment that point to look forward to so same thing with the creative is because i do have this adhd anxiety mm -hmm. whatever i'm just nuts you have all this creative energy i need to like, like direct mm -hmm. some to something and i need to do more of it because i'm stuck at home and i'm just editing that's creative mm -hmm. but i'm not filming and editing mm -hmm. if filming and editing together itself which is why like i'm known as like a shredder because i film edit thumbnail youtube strategy you know, keywords. Oh. I do every little possible thing all in one. Like you don't have to hire 50 people mm -hmm. to do what I do. Because, or normally you would have to have like three to five people to do what I do, but photos too. So it's like when I go to a job and I present that, it just brings value to, I guess, mm -hmm. the people. I forgot where I was going with that. I don't know. Yeah, I kind of no. got lost into it talking about myself, but. <laughs> no, that was, that was good. No, that's yeah. that's the point of this is you're you're processing. You needed to process, you know, mm -hmm. what you've been going through, and it's important to have these checkpoints and these moments to, like, just 
understand mm -hmm. what happened, what's happening before you can move forward and keep going. Because then it's like, if you just keep looking to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing, and you never like stop to kind of take stock of and process what you've been through and what happened, mm -hmm. then you'll never have the ability to be present because your mind will always be in the future thing. And then you're just going to be chasing something yeah. that doesn't even exist. Like, yeah. is, you know, like all we have is right now, mm -hmm. you know, and you could, this might be going on a little bit of a tangent, but I'll reel it back in, I promise. But it's like, you could have all the things on your wish list and your bucket list or whatever. But then as soon as you check it off, if you're just like thinking about the next thing and you don't know how to, you know, be present mm -hmm. in that moment, then you will never, you will never be satisfied. You will yeah. never be here. And so I think it's really important that you're taking time to process and understand like exactly and introspect, like what mm -hmm. exactly has been happening for you? How is that affecting you? So that way you can take the, the lessons for the future but then also just be centered back back in the present because you've been like you said just so in your head stuck at home and especially when you're doing the same thing over and over again even if it is a creative thing um something i've been learning about adhd brain is that we need novelty and which is why a lot of us don't do well in nine to five jobs where like the day looks the same every day mm -hmm. um, like the warehouse worker mailman just the yeah, same thing same like, route and same. that's something that i re realized that i needed is i need my days to look different every yeah. single day um no matter because i had creative nine to fives where i was a creative you know mm -hmm. technically but like going to the same desk every single mm -hmm. day you know and then having to do the same things every yeah. single week it just like it it just became that's mm -hmm. when I realized that creativity becoming a chore is the saddest thing that could mm -hmm. happen for a creative. And my affirmation for the last year that I've been working on is learning how to create with joy again. That's been like my biggest resolution. And I think that when you don't attach it to outcomes or identities, that's that's where you'll find it again, like, like you've been saying. Mm -hmm. So my question for you though, I wonder, you were dealing with imposter syndrome, it was triggered by basically survival mode because you had bills to pay and you know you were it was before that too it was just generally and that just that was the stacking so was oh and so it was so like that's just like up. the little things so it was like the but straw that broke since the I was camel little, since like 2006 right okay and so you're and then a, when you shared with like break dancing it's like there's this environment that has been instilled in you so if you think about yourself like an algorithm right mm -hmm. like the data that you have been getting fed and your brain is like you're not this enough. Yeah. You're not this enough. You're not this enough. Yeah. And especially in times when you're um, like when we're children and when we're growing up, and especially for y'all, y'all y'all don't get your frontal lobes till you're 25. Yeah, I'm still working on it. I'm <laughs> you're 30. still working on it. <laughs> a little bit delayed in transit. A little just bit, kidding. just a little bit, <laughs> just a tiny bit. But um, you know, when your brain is still developing, and even after your brain's yeah. been developing, it's always still like creating new neural pathways and new associations and mm -hmm. that's what being a creative is is mm -hmm. like taking information and resources and things that you that exist that you're aware of and then creating new associations right right so if your data set is if a large part of your data set during like the most developmental periods of your life was you're not this enough you're not this enough you're not this enough then of course that's going to carry into your adult mm -hmm. like waking life and right. that's where like I'm not an expert but that's from what I've learned from my therapist that's where like inner child work yeah comes in too because it's like I have a lot of trauma from my from childhood so yeah. it's probably one of the things that like leads into many things that happen nowadays like there's things I just don't talk about right that they're just right. like there that's happened I mean nothing like crazy bad it's more like abandonment I guess you could say yeah, yeah. and then it's just like you know what? That makes sense. Now it's all it's all intertwined. That, yeah. Like we live, unfortunately, we live in a society that is that tells us that things are supposed to be like clean cut and compartmentalized, mm. especially for those who are in the workforce. It's like leave your problems at the door. Yeah. Right. Like that's but that's that's not life. That's not humans. And things like do carry in and intertwine with each other. Like mm -hmm. our brain is these really interconnected neural networks and what you don't heal from you project you continue mm -hmm. you know you continue to to behave with so. yeah i probably need to go see a therapist 
<laughs> is that is that our is that our I mean that's probably like right here's now? one way to get over imposter syndrome is go see a therapist because you probably have trauma that's hiding behind it. I'm I'm being dead there's, serious no, no, right no, now. for real. There's so many yeah. layers and it's not always something that I mean there's only so much that you can uncover on your own. Yeah. Like my therapist, I'll think that it's imposter syndrome or I'll think it's like me gaslighting myself or whatever and she'll be like or is it because of your culture. Because my, my therapist is also Filipino American. Yeah, yeah. And she's like, or is it because, like, in our culture, you know, there's things that are expected, like, the, mm -hmm. the, like the shame in our culture, you know, or how shame works in our culture. Right. Where it's like you're not supposed to talk about certain things because mm -hmm. it's like you're going to bring shame on the family and you're just right. supposed to act like everything. And so, like, people-pleasing tendencies. All mm -hmm. this stuff is so interconnected with mm -hmm. not only ourselves as individuals, but then, like, our lived experiences, but then also, like, the society that we lived in and the systems that, you know, that we are beholden mm -hmm. to. And so um, yeah. I, I, I got to share the clip with you sometime, but I just did an interview with um, Louise, geez, mm. Louise. I don't know if you've met her, but we did an interview for Artsy. I think I did. We talked about imposter syndrome for a hot minute. Yeah. I, I will give you the clip if you want to insert it. But yeah. this gagged me so bad. She said imposter syndrome was something that was originally created by like oppressors, I think by white people for mm -hmm. people of color. So that way they couldn't ever think that they were mm. good enough to do a, a job that like that a sense. white person or like that a yeah. privileged person. Even for do. women. Yeah. 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 So it's like. I, it's, I, I didn't come up with the rule. No. I just. <laughs> you. Not me. I didn't do it. Oh my gosh. But, but it's no, like when you sense. think about it, it's like this term is a man-made term. Mm. Like it, it's, it's such a made up term and it was, it's a malicious term. It's almost like it when you created... read a fortune cookie and you're like, oh, that relates. So, you, so I, well, I'm just trying to see what would make sense. So. Because when you say something like, oh, yeah, like when you talk about, about hey, only only we can do it compared to like, oh, we all could do it, it's going to take work, but whatever. Mm -hmm. Same. So it's like you're being fed that and you're like, oh, you're right. You're being programmed. Yeah. Yeah. No, our subconscious is like, oh, it works a lot harder than our conscious minds. Mm. You know, we only have the capacity for so much conscious effort but there's so many things we do in our day that are automatic and then we're operating out of our subconscious mm -hmm. like you know like when you're driving and you're like you're lost in your thoughts and you're like how did i even get home i don't even yeah, remember that like, happens so much like i'll be mm -hmm. driving and especially because i drive a lot we'll drive to california i've driven from seattle to california a few times i've driven from seattle mm -hmm. to las vegas i've done i've done these long drives and half the time i don't even remember where i like stop paying yeah. attention because yeah. my I'm paying attention but I'm not because and I do that so often our brain runs on so many like automatic functions and so that that goes to like even with um like our our subconscious is working hard mm -hmm. more than our actual conscious minds have. So, so that's why it's important to have these conversations to mm. talk to your trusted peers and support yeah. and like loved ones but then also therapy is an amazing resource because they're yeah. professionals mm -hmm. at, on the brain and on like what's that word for when people need reassurance i think reassurance is somewhat so there's some people who need reassurance like daily like they they need to know that they're doing the right thing or or they're being good at what they're doing. Like, I am someone that I think I might need that in a way, but I think I could, mm. like, f work my way around not doing that. But... Like, finding ways to... Yeah. Like, get that validation in so from like, let's an internal say, for source instance, instead of, like, external validation. Yeah, like, like, let's say I'm sitting home. I'm trying to come up with a quote, or I want to find a couple more retainer clients for doing video work, but... Then I start thinking, how artsy do I have to make my Canva P, uh, file thing to, to make a promo for it? Or how, like, am I worth paying this price for and all that stuff? So it's like I sometimes need to reassure myself of, like, yes, yes, and yes, just fucking do it. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I feel like there's, there's ways... To reassure, and lately I've I felt the reassurement through mm -hmm. work, right? So a lot of it, it's not really someone being like, it's always nice to hear. Like one of my clients now will 
text me and be like, hey, man, this video, he tells me when it's bad, too, but he'll tell me because I edit a video every single day for the past hundred something days now. And he'll tell me, like, when videos are good, like, hey, man, this video is really good. Like, you did such a great job and you're you're leveling up so much that I don't even know, like, how far you've gotten now. And I'm like, that's important. Damn. I was like, holy crap. I'm actually good at what I do. Cool. And then when I went and did the thing in Seattle, same thing, just like, man, we got so much done in four hours. We did like nine videos. That's unheard of. I'm like, yeah, that's, I was sick and shit my brains out. I could have done it a lot more if I, so it's like, some sort of reassurance. Now, some people will write on a whiteboard when they walk past it. They'll see like, you're good enough. You're good. Do this. So maybe I don't have that stuff laying around my house. So I think I want to almost test that out. I know this is like going all over the place, but it's just, I want to find ways to have imposter syndrome, not even be real. Have it just be almost have it as, as like an excuse. Just like something that... Is imposter syndrome an excuse? It, it, it depends on the context I think you know and it for sure I mean like not your it full it's not like a, a direct thing because I think for me to get over it I think I have to see it as an excuse like I'm giving excuse so so okay someone thinks that I'm not good enough or I'm going to copy them or or whatever it is and I'm not going to do the thing anymore I'm going to just rot away my life and not do anything because I'm I'm scared of what people might think to me, there's nothing physically stopping me. There's no one holding me with like a gun and knife saying, hey, don't ever post a video. Don't ever edit this video. Don't ever try and promote your services. Don't ever do this or else you're done for. So I almost think I give myself an excuse of, oh, that's what it feels like. You know I'm, what I mean? I'm going to find a quote right now because I Perfect. was just, I was reading. I love quotes. <laughs> I was, I, I'm currently <laughs> reading this book called Flow by... Oh my God, I'm not going to be able By to... By the way, I'm so bad at books. That's okay. I'm so bad at reading. I'm No, I'm a great reader. I'm bad at keeping reading. I get to page four and then I'm like, man, I wonder why... I wonder who made this book. I wonder how this book was made. That's called ADHD. And then I start going into like, like, where is this paper from? I never see this paper in stores. That's literally called ADHD I'm just saying, like, have you seen the paper in books and stores? <laughs> Has anybody ever seen that? The paper Even books, staples. They probably I've have, never seen that paper in staples. They probably have to, like, buy it from a book publisher. I know, but it's just crazy to think about. Oh, my gosh. What like, is where are books made? It's almost like babies. I'm s- <laughs> like actually, we know, could, fi- we could you- figure it out if we really wanted to. Like, babies, the storks. Okay, I will, I will, I will send you um, yeah. the quote later. I'm gonna. I, I apologize if I butcher it, um, but I'll give you the exact Freestyle. quote. So basically, I just read this passage in this book, and the book is like the science behind flow and like getting into a flow state, right? Okay. Um, and they, the author refers to um, the author talks about psychic energy, but when they are referring to it, they don't mean like woo woo shit. They literally mean like your psyche and then the energy that your brain puts out. That's what they mean when they're saying psychic energy. And so they were saying that um, people who are either like overly self-conscious or overly like self-centered are less likely to be experiencing flow states because a lot of their psychic energy is being directed towards like how others are going to view them mm. or how they view themselves. Like being scared to dance at a wedding. Yeah, but it's like w- with what you were saying, yeah. like, oh, what is this person going to think? What is this person going to think? What is this mm-hmm. person going to think? And the studies have been finding that uh, they've done a lot of studies on like different types of people and different environments yeah. and like different like variables and seeing like what kind of groups are more likely to experience a flow state. Mm-hmm. And they have found that the people in one study, the people who were able to experience flow states are actually using less psychic energy or brain power because your brain is able to kind of like just tap into the, in an, in like, and be really efficient and effective mm. with the type of part or the parts of your brain that it needs and the, the right amount of energy that it needs to be in that concentration and flow state. Um, so it's almost like getting into a creative flow state or getting into that state 
requires you to really just shut out all that extra noise mm -hmm. and chatter and then you're not using as much of your brain because it's kind of just like you're riding the wave sort of yeah. thing. It, yeah, if you think about like riding the wave, then, right? Because yeah. I get very fatigued as in not like physically, but I'll be sitting there and I know how easy it is to mm -hmm. edit something. Like I have some mm -hmm. edits I have to do tonight and there's times where I'll get the edits in my phone and I'll be like, oh, then I'll sit on my phone because I, I, I just have to think about the energy that's going to take to go there and do this. But then once I do it, it's easy and it goes by fast. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, why didn't that's I do that earlier? Actually also, that's something that you could tap into. Like it's a superpower with ADHD. It's a double edged sword, right? But we are, we have an ability to hyper fixate like on superhuman levels, but a lot of times we end up hyper fixating on the wrong things, which is mm. where that can bite you in the ass. Yeah. <laughs> like going down rabbit holes of just the, the stupidest things. Yeah. But if you can learn how to channel it into the mm. right things and also um, your brain, it actually does, if you like, if you're using too much brain power energy, you can actually feel physically depleted because your brain needs glucose in order to like expend that brain power. And I was telling you earlier, like mm. decision fatigue. Yeah. Our brains are only capable of making so much. I was in a Home a Depot for one <laughs> for <three> hour hours. <laughs> picking up, where's that little screw at? Right here. Oh no, we don't have to revisit this. To get two of these <laughs> little things right here, this thing, and it's supposed to work. It's supposed to go like this, anchor to the wall so we could hang up some backdrops. I spent an hour inside Home Depot looking at this People same exact thing <laughs> and I was looking at other options and then I finally was like you know what I'm just gonna do this I didn't want to get it because it was metal and I didn't know if it would work and what do you know it's metal and it doesn't really work for for this space <laughs> and then I had a drive here and I tried putting it in and then it didn't go in and then I spent so long on it and I'm like, damn, I could have just recorded this thing. And then you were exhausted by the time you came in here. So right now I'm just like, mm -hmm. whatever. Well, that's it. But that's, that's why I wanted to get over it and just do it. Yeah. Nike. Nike, yeah, for sure. Can't believe. But yeah, it's like so it's like it, it actually you do get physically depleted from. I think that's from, what happens. I, um, I do it to myself. Spending too much mental energy, and for me, I'm like, I'm not. I, I've never been super big on medication like running to things like when I have a cold or a cough I usually like try to do things holistically and then if it's really bad I have a flu then yeah I'm gonna I go straight to Dayquil or NyQuil. NyQuil or some Dayquil right but people give me crap for it but I'm right. like I'm not trying to feel like crap I got work to do right, right, <laughs> you know? right. but honestly for me after um like finding the right medication for me for ADHD and like seeing somebody, I found that I actually have a lot more physical energy. And that tells me that I was using ADHD all medicine. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Like, um, that tells me, I've never that, taken any of that. So I don't know. Right. Right. And there's natural ways to do it too. You know, like yeah. with some of like the clients that I work with, they have like the mushroom gummies and stuff, but me finding, I used to struggle with energy so bad thinking like, why can't I ever have energy? Why is everything so tiring? And then after like, stabilizing my levels with like the ADHD medication that I've been on for the last six months or so, mm -hmm. I've been finding that I actually have a lot more physical energy, which tells me that I was depleting like my glucose reserves mm. on all of my men unnecessary, like mental energy that I was spending and like the, you know, the, the cycles, the internal cycles and feedback loops that were not even important or uh, necessary in any way. Right. Um, I feel like now I'm able to think more linearly and um, more streamlined and mm. I have more physical energy. I find that like when I, on days I don't take my medication, I actually feel more tired, which is really? crazy. So it might be something to look into yeah. too. It's not. And there's days where I feel a hundred percent. Yeah. But that's, that's the thing is like society is built at least like our workforce and like corporate America is built for a specific type of person for neurotypical people, but then also like the 40 hour work week was created for like the industrial revolution labor force, yeah. the, you know? And so that's like the science and studies have shown that the human average human, like an average neurotypical human probably is actually only capable of 32 hours of productivity on average. Mm. And so 32 hours is like the best you're getting in a 40 hour work week and the eight hours other people are just fucking around and acting like they're working because they're 
brains on are probably even, more than that probably more than that to be honest probably like 19 of it's working or even 10 of it's actually working yeah but that's why like yeah. i think it's important to also be in a place where you're not tying your worth and your identity to your output mm. and to the money that you're able to make or like the work that you're able to get which is why i asked you earlier like do you feel like you're getting over imposter syndrome because you're making the amount that you want to make now and if that were to not mm. happen will the imposter syndrome come back so like are you really getting over it or is there more that mm. we could be exploring or is there more to like be discovered there you know i i think it plays into i think money plays a huge part into any sort of 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 life survival happiness mode. like right? operating on survival mode will yeah. fuck you up <laughs> for sure it does when you do it for too long yeah so the answer is i don't think money itself is the thing that now it's nice because it helps take away all the other stresses of unnecessary things well not unnecessary but like bills or whatever it is but I think, like I said, being active, doing something. Like I said, I've been editing videos for the past 100 plus days, every single day, sometimes two videos in a day. And they're vlogs and they're, they're not mine. They're one of my clients. And it's something that it's kept me active. Now, at the same time, I'm making money from it, right? So it's nice, but it's almost as a, as like a, uh, the money I'm receiving, what it feels like is, Thanks for your hard work. But the work comes first. Mm -hmm. I've always worked. There's nothing I've ever done expecting something from anyone else. I've never expected anything. There's some fun thoughts I'll have like, oh, well, maybe this will get me this, right? That's what everyone thinks. Mm -hmm. It's just a, a normal human thing. But um, everything that I do has been work first. If, if a client's not happy with my work, I'll find a way to fix it. Simple you have as that. Standards there, for there's, yeah, I'm not going to be <laughs> like, oh, that's that's it. Sorry, my bad. No, Peace the thing out. about you is you have work ethic. Yeah. Like you have a strong work ethic. Yeah. So answer is, I think money plays a huge part, mm -hmm. um, because it does help relieve that energy part that I'm probably focusing on with my mm -hmm. brain, and it cools it down, and I'm able to give more of myself for the work. Mm -hmm. So I'm a better worker when there is money coming in. And maybe that's the wrong mindset to have, what? but it's a stronger area for me. And people notice it too. Like, like my client right now, um, right now he'll, he'll notice when we first started. And by the way, when we first started, I was like dead broke. I was kind of like on the end of like every finance that I have in my pocket. And, but he noticed I was hustling hard. And now that I'm making money, I'm hustling harder. So it's not that I don't work when I don't have it. I just mm -hmm. didn't have enough work to make up for whatever expense I was getting or having to spend. But now that the two are equaling with each other, it's nice, but it's mainly the doing that has gotten over the imposter syndrome. And I, yep. I'm not over it. I still have it right now. I'm going to drive home and I'm going to think about this on the way home and about how I haven't had my own videos or do more tests and stuff. I had, successful tesla videos and why did i continue doing it oh because other people do it every day other people do it more than i do they know more than i do all that stuff but now it's like you know what i don't care i'm gonna make my tesla videos yeah. if you don't like it don't subscribe and where did you learn the idea that there's only allowed to be x number amount of tesla creators and on the flip side of that people who are interested in tesla content only watch three tesla creators max true because when i first bought mine guess what i watched hella videos watched everyone. Yeah. and i did research and my very first video got i think there's room ten thousand views yeah there's room because i did everyone. research and everything else but yeah anyways i'm just i i think i think i'm just trying to like nicely say i'm sick and fucking tired of it yeah in the nicest way possible and like i'm hurting not even myself but my family by not doing it yeah so i think to wrap this up it's just if there's imposter syndrome, if I feel it, if you feel it, she feels it, the dog feels it, whoever, I think, you know, <laughs> you look, trying to run right now, I'm trying to imposter, like... trying to be a fast cheetah. But uh, I think my, my main thing, if I could like leave someone, if they're watching a short, this is a short, let's just say, the main thing to get over imposter syndrome, I think, is by staying 
busy and active. Same thing with when you're upset and stressed out and like everything leads to staying busy. Now, of course, there's people out there who are too busy and that creates more tension, but I'm just talking about imposter syndrome itself. Most people who feel imposter syndrome haven't gotten started yet. Yep. A mm, lot of people who have part. imposter syndrome aren't doing the work to, because they're sitting there, let's say they're watching a vlog or watching a cooking guy or watching whoever, and they want to do what they want to do. So there's, they're going to these Facebook groups and joining them. They're going to these seminars they're going to these events. And they're just like, Oh, I can't wait to go home and do a video because I'm inspired today. And then all of a sudden, Oh, I'm never going to be like them though. Yeah. I think so, that stay busy. Another huge key of that. And this is the last thing I'll say, cause I know you're trying to wrap it up. Um, is those with imposter syndrome, imposter syndrome, you, you, you got to be real. Like there's a little bit of ego involved, right? Mm -hmm. And so if you are thinking about imposter syndrome or if imposter syndrome is stopping you, then it's very likely that you're overthinking things. Oh, yeah. Because if you're actually, like you're saying, just I'm definitely doing an OT things, for sure. doing things, yeah, if you're actually doing things and there's not much time to think, think about it as much. And the other part of it is I think it's important to, um, it's just a lot easier for your brain to, to come from like a growth mindset and from a curious perspective, mm -hmm. because if you feel like you're an imposter, because in the hierarchy of like experts and people, you're not up here or good enough with everyone. Well, there's a few things. One, if you're smart, if you're the smartest person in the room, you've heard it, you're in the wrong room, mm -hmm. right? So that shouldn't even be the case. And then yep. two, if you approach things from more of like, what can I learn from this? Mm -hmm. And what, how can I grow from this? Yeah. Then I feel like that's also an easy, an easy way to combat imposter syndrome because in, you're relieving your, you're relieving the pressure of having to present a certain way mm -hmm. or be at a certain level. But then if you just come at it as a, I'm a student, mm -hmm. I'm in, I'm learning in this experience. Like what can yeah. I learn from this? Then what's, what's being an imposter about being a student? Like yeah. who's going to look down on yeah. a student? Who, someone who wants to learn something and they're open to it. Yeah, and someone That's why I think like being that. humble, showing gratitude, all that other stuff that everyone talks about. 